Ready? I'm ready. We're ready. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, I mean, you know, it's a bit covered in mud and slime and whatever that thing is, but, oh, boss, that is a Ferrari Dino under there. Let me get it back to the shop and cleaned up. Then you'll see what I'm talking about. Not just a Dino, a 246 GT with the bigger engine. Runs as smooth as it did the day it rolled off the production line. It took a little while to get that smell out of the seats, though. This is gonna be a good one, I just know it. Oh boss, we stand in the presence of greatness. The Holden Sandman. See that faded paint? That's the Sea Witch livery. It's not a custom job. Holden had it like that in the brochure. Back to the garage. I'll get this fixed up and give you a call, all right? You have to understand, this isn't just a car. This is a changing room. It's, it's a mobile surf club. It's a, it's a drive-in cinema. It's a one-bedroom flat. It's an institution. Come on, the suspense is killing me. No way is that a Ford Woody. It is. It's a Ford Woody. This thing is like a priceless antique. It's like finding a Rembrandt in your garage. Well, for me it is. I'm taking you back to the shop, surfboard and all. I'll let you know when you can have it. Remember that suitcase we found on the roof? It was full of clothes from the 50s. Someone must have shipped this thing out just after the war. Talk about a blast from the past. Love this part. That's an FX. That's the first Ute Holden ever made. That is Australia's gift to the motoring world, right there. However, ugh, 
This one smells like it's had goats living in it. I'll take it back to the garage. You just wait till I get it cleaned up and retuned. There it is, the FX Ute. The beginning of two fine Australian traditions. Putting trays on the backs of muscle cars and abbreviating words that don't really need abbreviating. Okay, time to open her up. Sixty-nine Dodge Charger Daytona. Look at the size of that wing. This is a custom NASCAR racer. What's it doing all the way out here? I'll get the Charger back to the shop. See if I can get it fixed up and maybe find out how it wandered so far from home in the first place. So, I did a bit of background on this one. Turns out the guy imported it to modify for the Australian touring car circuit. Never finished it, but at least he saved it from a life of going round in circles all day on a NASCAR track. That 69 Daytona charge is ready for pickup. And wait till you hear the story behind it. And who's our next contestant? Hmm, looks like a Skyline GTR. The V Spec. Back in the 90s, these things ran right in the Aussie touring car circuit. I'll get it back to the shop and get to work. Feel free to check in if you like. They nicknamed the V-Spec Godzilla. Something about being Japanese and monstering the competition. I don't know. I think it's just misunderstood and needs to be loved. Okay, wow me. Dune buggy, cool. This is a Myers Manx. I always wanted one of these when I was a kid. Actually, I wanted a Lamborghini Countach, but I figured I couldn't take it on the beach. I'll take it back to the shop. We'll have you blasting across the dunes in no time.
Only a 1.5 litre engine, but a full fiberglass body, so it weighs nothing. Should go like the clappers. And it's street legal. What are you waiting for? Would you like to do the honours? That is a Lamborghini, believe it or not. The LM002 was supposed to be a luxury car you could take off-road. Looks like this one's been hitting the dirt too hard. The suspension's gone. I'll take this back to the shop. Replace the springs, clean it up. Won't take long. You have no idea what a nightmare it was finding parts for this thing. Guess now we know why the previous owner gave up on it. Still, runs like a dream now. It's all yours. Dan, there's another driver who'd be perfect for your lineup. Let's see what all the fuss was about. <laughs> it's a reliant regal. This is a classic piece of British motoring history. You keep digging up classics at this rate, and this time next year, you'll be a millionaire. I'll get this cute little guy fixed up. Should still be a hoot to drive when it's finished. I know it's only got three wheels. I know you only need a motorbike license to drive one. I know it was a running joke on British telly, but, you know, I just can't help but love this thing. Open her up. Will you look at those lines? This isn't just any Ferrari. This is a 166. First car they ever won Le Mans with. The car that started it all. And the poor thing looks like it's been sandblasted. Taking this Ferrari back to the garage and restoring it to its former glory. I'll call you when I'm done. This thing didn't just win Le Mans. That same year, 49, it won the Targa Florio and the Mille Miglia as well. 
Hence, 166MM. This is what it's like to be a car nerd. Shall we? It's a Holden Monaro GTS 350, 5.7 litre V8, circa 1973. Sorry, it's just this is an emotional moment for an Australian. back to the shop. I just need some time alone with this thing. Y you can have it soon. You know what I found when I started working on it? The entire frame was twisted. That's how much torque this thing has off the line. <laughs> Brings a proud tear to your eye, doesn't it? Best part of my job, right here. Old Land Cruiser, nice. You can't kill a Land Cruiser. They kept bringing out new models, but they really shouldn't have bothered. All the ones from the 70s are still running fine. I'll still take the landy back to the garage, give it a once over. I'll let you know when you can have it. My dad had one of these. Never took it off road, never got it dirty, never drove it much faster than 50. That's probably why I take after my mum. Come on, what have you got for me? I can't even see it under there, is that? No, it can't be. It looks like one of the rarest and most valuable Maseratis ever made, currently being used as a bookshelf. Mate, if I'm right, this is huge. Give me a chance to get it fixed up at the shop, yeah? The Pininfarina Berlinetta. They made four of these. Four, that's it. And now we're standing in front of one. I'm telling you, this feeling is what I live for. I am way too excited right now. 
73 Falcon XB, 5.8 litre V8, main force patrol interceptor, fuel injected suicide machine. <laughs> you might have to give me a minute. Uh, yeah, sorry about that outburst. It's an Australian thing. I'll get it cleaned up and report back. With this much horsepower, you will rule the wasteland. I asked the Horizon people if I could put on some spikes and crossbows and a flamethrower, but they said no. Every day is like Christmas morning with you. It's a Jag. Oh yes, it's a Jag. Mark II, if I'm not mistaken. 3.8 litre engine, racing livery. But none of that matters, right? I mean, it's a Jag. You feel classy just standing near it. I'll take it back to the shop and get it restored. I'll be in touch soon. This thing was so quick back in the 60s that every crook had one for a getaway car. So the police started driving them too. See? Car culture. Bringing people together since 1959. 